The Small Business Show, episode 211, for Wednesday, February 20th, 2019. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co. You know us, the show where we're by, for, and about small business. Sponsors for this episode include abbyconnect.com slash SBS and expressvpn.com slash SBS. Those are the URLs. I'm going to spell them later and tell you why you want to go there. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And this is Shannon Jean coming to you out from out on the West Coast. How are you, man? I'm good. Easy for you to say. <laughs> Some, huh? Something. Yeah, somewhere I'm out. I'm out here somewhere near. I'm in California. You're out there. That's the right <laughs> yeah, way to I'm say out it. There. Yeah, yeah, I'm out there. <laughs> Oh, it's crazy, crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, glad to be here. You know, today I, w- I was just telling you, you know, it, th- it's a little different format for this show because I'm asking, uh, I have some questions about a topic that's really been um, in, in, top of mind for me lately. And that is aspirational marketing, not inspirational, but aspirational. And, and we're going to talk about that today. And I'd love to get your input, Dave. Yeah. And uh, I, I have some thoughts on it about, number one, we'll talk about what it is and how we may be able to use that in our small businesses. And I, I would love, um, you know, feedback at businessshow.co. If you listen to this episode, if you'd like to tell me, you know, oh yeah, you're right about this or wrong about that. And we'd certainly love to hear your stories about how you may be using aspirational marketing. So, so I have, a, I have, I know yes. you want to ask a bunch of questions. I have a yeah. question to ask. Yes. What is aspirational marketing? Perfect. That's good. So if you look it up, uh, you know, it involves, you know, you're kind of selling this vision of uh, we're striving in a, a, lo- a long lasting and meaning- meaningful way to achieve or become something in particular. The, for, the urge for something better or unique, you know, to be, oh, I'm going to get healthy, right? Okay. Gyms sell an aspirational type of marketing with their memberships, right? Especially towards the new year. Everybody is getting motivated. Right. Um, you know, fashion design houses uh, where, you know, I'm in this, I have this luxury goods business now, and I'm, I'm trying to learn a lot about it because, you know, I buy all my clothes like at Costco. So I know nothing about fashion, <laughs> but, I, but I know, I know a deal when I see it. Right. Right. And it, uh, so th- these fashion houses, they use, uh, or places like Victoria's Secret, they use big uh, shows, fashion shows and events to sell this aspirational vision where people that watch that, they may never be able to afford an item or maybe fit inside an item uh, that a piece of clothing or something that is being shown. But when they go to the store and they see that brand, they've got this aspirational vision in their head. Like, Oh, I, I, I want to be like this. I want to be associated with this brand. And I think that, uh, you know, they want to own the best thing. Uh, and and th- these iconic brands that we recognize, whether it's Apple, Chanel, you know, uh, Tesla, whatever it is that that they've created this kind of aspirational vision. And, and, and I wonder uh, how we can use that same type of marketing message in our small businesses. Yeah, and that's. That's okay. what I want to talk about today. Yeah, yeah. fascinating. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I don't know. I don't know if it's possible or not. Yeah. But I think so, it is. so giving people an it's for some of the audience an unachievable, uh, creating a product that is unreasonable or unachievable for some part of the audience, but using that as the brand definition and then giving them other things that that do fit for them. Yes. Yeah, huh. exactly. So and it's like so it's able- like Apple with the um with the the when they came out with their watches, right? And they had that one ceramic watch. Yes. 99% the, 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 of, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's right. And and even then I think that was actually probably not a great example because they it people looked at that and were like I don't want to spend 10 grand on this, you know, gold right. or whatever. Right. But but if you think about like uh again, I lean on what I'm kind of familiar with lately is a, a, a high end fashion brand, uh, you know, Prada yeah. or a, a Louis Vuitton. Well, you know, most maybe most people can't afford a five thousand uh, dollar handbag or, uh, you know, right. three thousand dollars. It just doesn't make sense for most folks. It doesn't make sense. But 
in that same in that within the product line, there are affordable things that most of us could purchase that would align us with that aspirational brand. Got it. And, and I don't even think, it, and it doesn't just have to be a product. I think it could be a service as well. Yeah, of course. Um, sure. Right. We had, uh, you know, Gilbert Goodrow from Hotels Villas Direct last week, and he was talking about these different levels of hotels. You know, there's ultra luxury, ultra luxury, just premium in there's regular, whatever. However, I don't know how you, how you break yeah. it down, but certainly if you want to stay at a, a hotel brand, they have all different levels to try to, you know, bring those people. And, I, and again, I don't know if that's a good example of aspirational, but just different, different levels of it. Well, you, you um, know, you see the pictures of the, the suite atop the Westin or the, yeah. atop the W. It's and like, that's oh, what they yeah, show on the website. Right? I stayed at, I stayed at the yeah. W. Well, yeah, yes. but I, I stayed in the, you know, the little 200 <laughs> square foot room. In the dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when you go to the W's website, what pictures are they showing you? Yes. The big suite, the big with a, you know, whatever, if you look Even at these hotels, they you know, know, like they know yeah. that, Again, 99% of the people that are visiting will never, uh, probably could never afford it, but whether they That's could right. or couldn't, will never even consider booking that suite. And yet yep. that's what they show you when you come to their website. That's counterintuitive to practical it, marketing, right? Why right. are you showing the, yeah, people- Yeah, this is not practical, right? Right. Why yeah, are not, you showing people something that does not, that, that is not the product you want to sell them? That's aspirational marketing. Okay. Right. I, I, so I, does it make sense? It does. It, it, I, yeah. I think one, one last example is I heard this phrase in, in a long time ago, but it was from a car dealer that said, look, if you want to sell station wagons, you need to have a sports car yeah. in your showroom. Right. Right. Because you're drawing in this, oh, look at that. And then there's a practical side to say, well, <laughs> you know, I got two kids or three kids and I need to have a minivan and da, 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 da. But you're still, you're, you know, you're selling that that aspirational thing that I could be that, that person. Yeah. So, so I, I, I have a Ford station wagon, but I, I could have yeah. a Mustang. That's an awful example yeah. because you could probably have both, but yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> but still right. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so now that we kind of have an idea of, of what aspirational marketing is. And again, now if, that we if, have that idea, I'm actually going to take yes. a, a minute and talk about our two sponsors. Now that we've oh, set idea. this up, yes. I am yep. going to take a minute. And our first sponsor today is, is Abby Connect. Now, on this show, we have talked about how critical efficiency is for your small business. We obsess about it, right? I mean, like all the time, I'm thinking about how to make my business more efficient. How can I make sure that the time that I'm spending is actually time I need to be spending versus something that either could be done by an automated way or by someone else or simply not done at all. Like a big part of efficiency is cutting that out. Well, one thing you can't cut out is your customer service, right? You have to let your customers talk to you and you have to make them feel like you are listening to them. And what's one great way to make people feel like you're listening to them when they call? Answer the phone. That's why we want to talk about Abby Connect's live receptionists. OK, to scale your business, it's important to have strong people supporting you. Right. Who are the people that are front facing? Who are the ones that are offering great service to your customers and potential customers? But as a small business owner, it's hard and time consuming to build that strong culture when you've got people that need to be doing other things. And this is what's so impressive about Abby Connect, because you get an entire team of professional, courteous receptionists available whenever you need them. They're specifically trained by Abby Connect and your business, right? They figure out what it is that you need and they train their receptionists. They're all at the same location in Las Vegas. So they work with each other, right? This is not a distributed thing. They're all in the same place. And so you can be certain that they are perfectly trained to make sure your phones are answered and the calls are handled in the way that you would want for a fraction of the cost of actually hiring someone to be in your office to do this. And so we know that Abby connect will make a strong impact on your business. And we've worked out a great deal to get you started. So what you get no obligation, free trial with Abby connect. 
Then, after your initial trial, you can get 95 bucks off your first bill. But the only way to get these two things, the no obligation free trial and 95 bucks off your first bill, is going to abbyconnect.com slash SBS. I told you before I'd spell it and I'm going to. It's A-B-B-Y connect dot com slash SBS. That's A-B-B-Y C-O-N-N-E-C-T dot com slash SBS. Abbyconnect.com slash SBS. Our thanks to Abby Connect for sponsoring this episode. Our next sponsor is ExpressVPN. Here's the thing. We all think that cybercrime is something that happens to someone else. You might think that nobody wants your data. Your data is boring to other people. And you might think that hackers can't grab your passwords or credit card details. But you're wrong. Stealing data from unsuspecting people on public Wi-Fi is one of the simplest and cheapest ways for hackers to make money. They can sit in a coffee shop or restaurant or whatever and sniff the packets that go by. And when there's something good, they can grab it. And when you leave your Internet connection unencrypted, you might as well be writing your passwords and credit card numbers on a huge billboard for the rest of the world to see. But you can take action like we did. You can protect yourself like we do and use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your Internet browsing by creating a tunnel between your device, your phone, your computer, your tablet or whatever, and the outside world so that and that whole tunnel is encrypted and secure. So anybody sniffing your Wi-Fi doesn't matter. They can't see what's in the tunnel. The most they can see is that the tunnel's going to ExpressVPN. And even that would take quite a bit of work on their part. It's super easy to use. It's one click and it works. We've been using it for a while here. I use it when I travel. I use it, you know, all the time. It's great. It just works. And it's less than seven bucks a month. You can get that same service from ExpressVPN that we have. And it's the number one VPN service rated by Tech Radar and comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So here's how it works you go to expressvpn.com slash SBS. That's E X P R E S S VPN.com slash SBS. And you get three months free with your one year package there. It's a great deal for a great service. Again, expressvpn.com slash SBS. And our thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. Now we know what aspirational marketing is, and and that yes, now we're going to aspire <laughs> to uh, see how we may use it in okay. our small businesses, right? Cool. Yeah. And so when I was, you know, taking notes about this, uh, the the thing I kept coming back to is is a way to think about our marketing message and strip it down to some really basic aspira aspirational details, such as what can your customer achieve with your product or service? How can they create a better self? How does your product or service make your customer feel unique? Really important on that one. Oh, like uh, that. Yeah. yeah. How can your product or, or service make your customer feel smarter? And, and uh, we, you know, using that gym membership, how, how can it make them feel healthier? Those, those kind of things are, you know, thinking about them, you may not think about your products or services like this that often, but I think it's important if you want to go for this aspirational thing and, and make your product stand out, especially if you feel like you're in a business that is slipping into a commodity type of situation where, you know, you're you're competing on price, which we you know, we know it's just you a don't want to do. Problem. Yep. You don't want to get in that. Uh, so you want to try to figure it out. And um, so. One of the ways we discussed a little bit, and I want to go in a little more detail, is to create different levels of your product or service. And you can base this on a price point, maybe a feature set, uh, uniqueness, and, and the last one would be, I think, scarceness, I think is a good one. Um, and when you create like a high-end version of what you offer, and along with mid and lower tier, it allows customers that look at that top level thing like, oh, I want that car with all those options. That's what I saw in the advertisement. And the small print says, you know, contains options, da, 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 right. that adds 10 or 20 grand to the cost of your car. I want that one. But when they're there, well, okay, that's out of my price range, but what can I get? Um, and I had, a, I had a sales guy um, 
that that we worked with for a brief period of time. He, he never actually worked for us, but we did some work with him. And and he he was really sold on the whole bronze, silver, gold. He's like, offer yeah. the customer these three packages. He says, you'll sell silver all day long. Nobody wants to buy the cheap one. Nobody feels like they can afford the expensive one, but they know it's there and they feel yeah. good buying silver. And it's, you know, to your point, it, it, all those questions that you asked are about how your customer feels about using exactly. your product. Yeah, it's the it's same. You go to the to a ball game or some event and they have the, you know, small, medium and large or whatever. And you've seen those things on online where they pour the large into the medium yeah. and, it, and it still fits. I mean, you know, that that's a little shadier, but they're you know, they're, they're going to constantly upsell when you're at the restaurant and you order a beer and Oh, do you want the 16 or the 20 ounce? Yeah. You know, they're, they're trying to, to, you know, get you into these d- different levels to be able to service each type of customer. Um, well, and, and that's the thing. When you pick the 16 or the 20, you now feel good about that decision, right? Yeah. You think, Oh, I got the 20 because I know that I'm going to want more beer. The 16. Oh, I feel good. Like that's enough for me. Right. But now yep. you've chosen and th- yeah, that's fascinating. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So giving that choice is, a, is, is, I didn't even think choice about that in, in, in and of itself. Thing. Yeah. Giving, yeah. Having choice is, is a, is a really important one. And, and I'll give you an example again from this, this fashion world that I'm, I'm learning so much about in, when I started buying handbags and I'm a uh, opportunistic buyer, right? I'll go to a company like Prada and we'll buy everything. Hey, well, of course we'll take it all, any condition, whatever it is. And I was really worried um, because a lot of this stuff would show up and be in pretty poor condition. So here you have like a a retail priced Prada handbag. It's 2,500 bucks. Okay. And I don't know what percentage of the population buys a $2,500 purse, but I imagine it's pretty small. Right. Um, So we sell that version for about $1,500. So we've, we've advanced, uh, opened that, you know, broadened our, our customer base, but that's still, that's That's a a lot of money. Yeah. It's a lot of money. So then we, what the only, we, we just did this cause we had to, we have, Oh, here's a bunch of used ones that we received as well. So let's price this used one at $900. And then, you know, horrifically, there's a bunch in this shipments that are all beat to hell and, and have defects. And I go, okay, well, let's try to get rid of those things at 600 bucks. And what I found was that there's lots of people that want the 1500 to $2,500 bag, but they can only afford the $600 version, but they still get to carry that brand. And even though it has some marks on it, wow. that somebody that's like, I look at it and like, Oh, look, this is really mark these marks here. And this is bad. And there's a tear in the inside here. Well, the average person that, the, that wants to carry that, or may, it's the same thing the person that wants to drive a Ferrari, there's, I'm, you know, there's probably cheaper versions that, you know, versus ones that are double the cost. So it, it turned out that our return on investment is much higher on the defective bags than it is on the brand new ones. Yep. And I, I really can't put too fine a point on this because it, it's, you know, the, those kind of product we pay much less for. So where you may double your money on the low end, but on the high end, you're making, you know, much smaller ROI, much smaller, you know, margin. Yeah. Um, so don't forget all these different levels that you can, that you can offer to your customers that maybe don't have the budget. And you'll have to think about how does that work for your specific product or your specific service, but that choice in, in, a, in the. Yeah. You have to make up. sure you don't, I don't want to say devalue, but, but yeah, um, that's right. You, you don't want to, you don't want to lessen this aspirational part of your brand, Correct. which frankly is why, you know, Louis Vuitton is not selling these bags to people. It's why they're happy to market them through you. The, the, yeah. Louis oh, yeah. Vuitton they don't want is, anything to do. They, they don't want any of their customers that are going into a, a right. factory store or a manufacturer. This stuff doesn't exist <laughs> to, right. to them. <laughs> but but yeah. to be fair, Louis Vuitton is still very much selling these defect bags. 
Right. They just oh, yeah. aren't doing them there. They're doing them through people like you. And there's yep. nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah. It's really fascinating. Yeah. 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 And when you go like I was in New York recently and we, you know, I love to go to those stores yeah, and I'm trying course. to learn, learn as much as I can about how this all works. And, you know, here at the Louis Vuitton store, you go in and sit down and the first thing they do is like, oh, can I pour you a glass of champagne? <laughs> you know, yeah. because we're going to talk about spending a lot of money on a, on a piece of not leather, uh, well, <laughs> coated canvas in many, in many ways. Yeah. Or many things. So I just sat there and I was like, this is fascinating, you know, cause it, they are selling the experience. You're buying a product, but you're coming in, you're being treated in a very special way. Uh, you know, they're pouring you some nice, you know, nice drink and maybe whatever. Um, think about how you might be able to apply that to your business model. Uh, or maybe you are, and and you could share with us how, how you're already doing. We'd love to hear about it. Yeah. Feedback at businessshow.co. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Sell yeah. the experience. It's so yeah. true. And it the yeah. problem is when, you know, and, and I found this in a lot of ways also or in a lot of scenarios it, it's true with employees too you know you get to see behind the curtain all the time right you by yep. by definition you're the business owner you have to know everything that's going on and sometimes it feels disingenuous not to share everything that's behind the curtain with everyone right and yeah. and and but the reality is you know and i mentioned employees a lot of times employees don't want to know what's behind the curtain. Like they, there's some things they want to know, but other things, no. And, and you have to understand that like the people that work for you and the, and the people that buy from you, it's a different mindset than you. And that's okay. Yeah. So, it, you know, you don't want to mislead people. I mean, for example, you don't want to, you know, Louis Vuitton doesn't want to take this scratched up bag and, and you know, uh, shine it with a cloth and put it on the shelf right. and sell it as new. Oh, yeah. No, exactly. that's misleading. But they just, like you said, they don't like they, those things don't exist to those people. The people at Louis Vuitton know that. You could pay twenty five hundred here or find one with a scratch that you don't care about on it and pay six. But they're not telling the customer that because the customer that's, that's right. in the store is it's there different. for that experience. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. It, they wouldn't feel. And this is where it comes back to what you said before. They wouldn't feel good about that person wouldn't feel good about that purchase if they spent six hundred bucks on something they knew was scratched. They want that's to spend right. twenty five on something that's brand new and yeah. you know oh, yeah yeah so it's a, it, yeah. it's an interesting thing yeah it is yeah and and so you know I, i'm really fascinated with this and i'm looking for ways to apply it to other areas i mean i have a, a, a software business and i have some other stuff going on and you know we do vacation rentals and and i thinking okay how do i apply this aspirational thing to these different businesses that i'm in and that's where it you know kind of led me down this path to talk about this today um another big thing i've i've really learned uh from this luxury business is scarcity is very important for aspirational brands and uh, i i don't know how we might make this work but uh so, you know, I believe most of it is artificial, but it's kind of sold as uh, as being real. And I learned about it by, you know, selling a particular handbag. It was happened to be a Louis Vuitton, not to harp on that brand, but um, a person commented as on a, on a listing that we had and said, well, boy, I just called Louis Vuitton. I want to buy this bag. And they told me it was a two year wait. Huh. <laughs> and that I could put my name on the list and they would get me a bag, but it's two years. And I thought, oh, that is just brilliant, you know, because you can't get it. The, the, you're you're just you want it even more because it's just not available as much. And that, you know, come on, they got they ought to be make millions of these bags. Right. It, right. it was not. Oh, they can make special. as many as they wanted, but they know that yeah. more people will buy the next bag. That's a limited run. Yeah, that's if, right. That's if right. they and, couldn't get the last one. Yeah. yeah. And fashion is all about that. At the end of the season, this stuff is gone. We are not making this anymore. Right. And that becomes, that's a tremendous opportunity. If you're a, uh, uh, an opportunistic buyer like me, yes. uh, you know, bottom feeder, if, if you will, but I'm always looking for deals. And at the end of the season, these huge companies or retailers are saying, well, we don't want, we can't have these shoes or this, whatever on the, on the floor. I'm sure, uh, Apple or computer place do the same thing. Yeah, oh, well, these the older model MacBook Pro, we've got to move these out. And, uh, you know, we spent years buying that kind of stuff too. But the other thing I, I, I think 
we could talk about too is scarcity is not just for products. You know, if you're a small business, a consultant, a service provider, maybe you are scarce. Maybe you're what everyone wants and they can't have you, but you have people that work for you that you can then send out and you're, you know, maybe you have to make an appearance here and there, but you're the aspirational uh, part of the business because yeah. you're the one they want to talk to. And, and I, I, I think it's a yeah, common Everybody occurrence. wants to talk to the owner or whatever it is. Yeah. Yes. And that's a and hard time. That's valuable, to make. right. It, to, to, to leverage. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's like, uh, it's that's a hard transition when you're growing your company from a you know if you're the small business person and and you're bringing on all these employees you're going to have groups of people that don't want to talk to anybody else and how you manage that uh that separation if you will is really an important part and and we've talked about it before on the, on, the, on the show yeah. but you know I, I thought about it it's like well wow that that's really kind of an asset that you may be able to to promote that scarcity it's like well if you by this kind of contract, I am going to come over and talk to you. I'm going to make sure I'm going to stop by every quarter and personally look at what's going on. You know, that, that's something to think about. You know, it's kind of limiting in a way, but maybe you can s- set it up uh, uh, in such a way that, you know, it doesn't take too much of your time and right. there's, there's a way to do yeah, it. Or I'm going to value. Analyze, you know. Yeah. 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 You add, you add value. So, or perceived think, value and and maybe actual value, value but certainly yeah. perceived value. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you've hired people that are smarter than you. Right. And because and, and I can remember telling customers, hey, this is the person that you want to talk to. They're way better at this than I am. You know, I'm busy managing the company. They know about this specific technology or whatever it is. Uh, but people still are like, well, you know, no. So th- think about the way you present it. Um, your own scarcity can be an aspirational thing for your customers. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so the last thing on my list is, is that, w- and, and I, I, we touched on it a little bit, but we need to, you need to give customers a way to own a piece of your aspirational product or service, even if they never use it, even if they never actually get the product or, or use the service. And I, I, a good example of this is I recently had lunch with a group of business owners that are in the uh, hunting and outdoor guide space. And, I, and I'm talking very high end stuff. OK, uh, th- these are people that, you know, if you want to go on a hunt with these guys to Alaska or some other crazy place, it's like ten to twenty thousand dollars. It's a, it's a massive experience. You're flying in. They're taking you up in the mountains. Right. And you're getting these big trophy animals. Um, and most people won't do that or can't afford that kind of hunter experience, but they still want to buy the jacket that is used Ah, on that type of experience or the boots or whatever it is. So these guys, they're very small, smart, very successful. Um, You know, one of them just sold their company for, you know, uh, seven figures, high seven figures. Um, That's what they're selling. It's 10% of their actual business is actually leading these hunts and everything else. And the other 90% are people buying the products and service that are kind of related to this, but it, it goes all the way down the food chain to the smallest, you know, 30, 40, $50 item. Right. And they get to own a piece of that and they can think about yeah. it. And, so, okay. You know, so this whole idea to kind of bring it around, this aspirational marketing is you define the, the, the vision the, the lofty goal that that or the lofty definition of your brand, right? You you define yeah. this this thing that is your brand, but it doesn't have to necessarily be the thing everybody affords as long as it's there yes. now and you incorporate some element of that into your product line or your service line or whatever it is. Yeah, now that's right. Everybody feels like they they got the twenty thousand dollar experience, even though they they got a fifty dollar hunting knife that really, yeah. if they went down the street, they could have bought for twelve dollars <laughs> the exact same knife without your logo on it. 
Yeah, you got it. And and I, I'll, I'll leave you with a, what I think is one of the best examples is, do you know uh, what Yeti coolers are? Those oh, big yeah. High chests, right? Yeah. So Yeti, they really defined the space where they created these ice chests using a, a process called rotoplast, I think, uh, rotoplastic, where the, the ice will not melt for like a week. I mean, it, it is incredible. That's pretty uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it, but most people do not need an ice chest that, it oh. keeps the ice for a week, but <laughs> those ice chests for an afternoon. Yeah, you got it. And those ice chests sell for about for anywhere from three, four, five hundred upwards of thirteen hundred dollars. Is uh, when I looked it up what? last night. Is some, yeah, thirteen hundred bucks for this big Yeti man, and it's awesome. However, I was fascinated. Yeti's a, a, a yeah, Yeti's a public company, okay. and okay. they report their earnings. So I just happened to listen in and read a little bit about them. It, most of their revenue now. The over 50% comes from selling personal items like small drink coolers, you know, these aluminum uh, uh, mugs that you carry your stuff in to keep your coffee warm or to keep your drinks, you know, uh, and they sell them for 30 to 75 bucks. And over 60% of their revenue now comes from those items. Because most people are not going to drop a thousand bucks on a cooler. Yeah. But they're like, oh, I got a Yeti this. And they work. There's no doubt about it. If it was garbage, they people would right. buy them. Right. No, um, it's uh, it's a real thing. But yeah, it's but, not the product they actually sell to most people. They now, built now. Their bra- yeah, they yeah. built their brand around these unbelievable bulletproof, bear proof coolers that keep ice, you know, <laughs> frozen for weeks. Yeah. But that's not what they sell most of. So so those are my thoughts, you know, uh, about aspirational marketing, how we could maybe use them for our small businesses and Again, I really would love your feedback. Come over to the small business support group at businessshow.co slash Facebook or route you over there and share how you do it um, or, or, you know, what we got wrong, what we got right. And, you know, this is a, a learning experience for me and I'd love to learn more. Yeah, man, this is great. You've got the wheels turning here. I, we, yeah, you know, that, that's the challenge, right? It, it, and and I, I mean, the challenge for all of us, in, including you, but but us too, is now looking inward at our respective businesses and saying, okay, what do we already have that if just positioned a little bit differently is now that aspiration and everything else sort of falls underneath that. That's really fascinating. And I, yeah, man, like, yeah, it's interesting. Hopefully it will spur some of that thoughts in in, in the implementation. So it's the implementation. That's it. Yeah. 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 And so if you implement some interesting and creative ways, please come back and share them with us so we can spread the, uh, the love to everybody. Yeah. We'll tell everybody what what you've done, uh, you know, with whatever level of detail you want to, you want to share. Come on the show and talk about it. Whatever you want. Sure. Or just send us an email. Like you said before, feedback at businessshow.co. Thanks so much for listening, folks. This is great. Yeah, what thank a, you. Uh, this is, yeah, this is good. Makes me think. Thanks to our sponsors, abbyconnect.com slash SBS, expressvpn.com slash SBS. Thanks for listening, folks. Keep living that charmed life.